This month, the Pentagon confirming the president had given Defense Secretary Jim Mattis the authority to send several thousand additional troops to war, which means at least 8,000 American troops are engaged in our nation's longest conflict. That also means those brave men and women returning home from those conflicts who have been wounded need help now more than ever. A med board, the standard process for returning, can take anywhere from nine to nine months to almost two years. Warriors then need housing and transitional op op options for themselves and their families. The Faraday's Troop Troops First Foundation just completed a transitional housing program located not far from Walter Reed, and they're doing just that. You're done with your care in the hospital, and the, the care doesn't end when you leave the hospital. Your recovery lasts a lifetime. Sergeant Leroy Petrie survived the unthinkable. In 2008, he threw a live grenade away from wounded comrades as they came under attack during a raid in Afghanistan. It was his seventh tour. Sergeant Petrie re-enlisted before retiring on his own terms, but not after a long road to recovery, suffering the loss of his hand and severe damage to both of his legs. It taught him the rehabilitation journey needs special attention. That support network is amazing, and it's great for the, for the spouse, the children, all, everyone involved. You have neighbors that you can rely on, that you can trust. Sergeant Petrie is referring to a newly built village named in his honor. Seven homes built for warriors transitioning back to civilian life with their families. It's 30 minutes east of Walter Reed Medical Center, which provides care and services to more than one million vets and their families a year. Rick Kell is the co-founder of Faraday's Troops First Foundation. To spend time with the warriors and understand what so many go through, the need for transitional housing just kind of smacks you in the face. The requirement is that they are engaged in the next step of their life, moving forward, either school, a job, um, uh, and uh, it, it's not a homesteading opportunity. They, they have to be defining where they're going. The first families got the keys to their new homes this week. They'll move into the village in July. But this gift is just as much for the caregivers as it is for the patients. Right now, there's upwards of five and a half million military caregivers. Many are caring for the men and women hurt in post 9 11 conflicts. These are not just homes, but sanctuaries for them, too. Caregivers deserve this this housing uh, as much as the patient needs it and it uh, hopefully makes the lifestyle easy being that they're accessible. Ready? While the paint dries in Riverdale, Maryland, Sergeant Petrie and the Troops First Foundation are already reaching for that next goal. They want to replicate the village in Texas and California near other military hospitals. We're providing an opportunity. That's all we're doing. And, and when the last house is finished and ready for occupancy, the, the reality is we're on to next. Of course, if you want to learn more information about the foundation funding the Village of Honor, you can go to the website at the bottom of your screen, www.troopsfirstfoundation.org.